All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. We're going to talk about a uh, doubling reverse, how we run our reverse and what we call our counter sweep. Uh, my name is Luke Catris. I'm the head football coach at Circleville High School. I have my uh, Gmail on there. You guys are welcome to email me or you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Catris Luke. I always like to talk double wing football. I always like getting better at that. So if you have any questions or anything else about how we do anything else, please feel free to reach out. And I wanted to talk about our reverse counter sweep because I always feel like when you see guys clinic about double wing, everyone's going to sit there and talk about power and counter and how they do that. Well, I feel like a lot of double wing guys are already kind of they're pretty ingrained about how they do that. So I wanted to pick a small portion of what we do and talk about that. All right, just a real quick introduction so you understand what our offense is and how we're kind of a little bit different than a lot of double wing guys. Uh, and here's how we label it. I have, we have our center and we're a flip-flopping line team. So our right side is always our strong side. So we have a power guard to the right, a power tackle and our wide tight ends, usually our best blocking kid. And then going on to the other side here on our left side, we have a quick guard and we have what I call our Utah and then our X tight end. We call him a Utah because anytime we have a formation with a U, we go on balance and he's going to go to our strong side and go in between our tackle and guard. And obviously we have our quarterback and then what we call our A, B, and C backs. And then I also put um, their series labels on here. So if our A backs carrying the ball, it's obviously a 20, B backs a 30, C backs a 40, and our quarterbacks a 10 series. And we structure this in order to put our best kids on our right side of the line. And then when we run our power play to the right, we want our best back over here at A backs carrying it. So our best running play. RIP 24 power is going to feature the A-back carrying to the right side behind our power side. Just so that makes a little bit of sense for you guys. All right, and just a quick breakdown of what we do, just so you guys understand. We only run certain plays to our power side, certain plays to our quick side, and we have a, we have a, a series of offense that segments and goes both ways. So we only run power to our power side. We'll flip-flop it and run it both ways. We only run counter to our quick side. We run power sweep to our power side, and we run this reverse counter sweep to our counter side. We wanted to make sure that we had some type of power action sweep that was able to go both ways. So when we run our rip motion, if we're motioning our A back right, we know we have the ability to sweep in both directions off of that motion just to give the defense a little bit more trouble there. We'll run rocket sweep both ways, trap both ways. We run our belly both ways and our passing changes a little bit. We'll waggle to the quick side and run our, excuse me, run our quick, uh, our sprint out passing game to our power side. Okay. And this is about it for us offensively. We don't run a lot of plays. We try to run a couple plays pretty good. Now why reverse counter sweep? Okay. Well, number one, it's an outside XX or double handoff play to your wing back. That's opposite your power motion. That's important to understand. You're going to see that when we come on to film here and I start explaining what that is. Okay. So we flip flop our line. And to me, that creates a series of issues. When you're flip flopping your line, people are going to know right away after watching film, what you're running to your power side, what you're running to your quick side. And you have to be able to have a series of plays that come back off of your power side that can play off of what you're doing, okay? And we noticed that we started having, a, a, to me, a series of issues off of this when we're running rip motion. The only thing that we're carrying back to that off the quick side where we were running waggle, we were running counter, and we didn't have anything outside of that. So that was why we, that was why we started running the reverse counter sweep play. It gave us something outside of that to our wing that we knew we could run several times a game. And okay, and after we had been at, and I used to coach with my brother, so I say we, after we had been at places for a while, we started running this place a lot and had a lot of success with this play. It was my first year as head coach last year at Circleville, and we, were, we didn't run the play as much, but wait, when you're going to see we get to film, I tried to show you several different formations and things that we did out of this, okay? And again, need for a quick side outside run threat in our base series, to me, was the number one issue. Now put on here, it plays off uh, counter to your quick side. And what I mean by that is when you're running power or counter, what's the defense wing going to do a lot of times? He's going to squeeze real hard. And a lot of times you'll see teams when we run our rip motion, they're going to squeeze that kid hard to the backside. A lot of times to chase. And when they do that, sometimes it makes it really difficult to run counter back into it. 
So to me, it makes a kid that's hard to kick is easy to log. That's what we always tell our kids. Hard to kick, easy to log. So that gave us something outside of that kid that's going to play off of the base technique that you're teaching that kid and how to defend us, okay? And the other reason we like this is it's very similar to power sweep, okay? When we install power sweep to our power side, we know we can come back and teach counter sweep to our quick side and be in under a day and we can have both in and be repping them and get better at them, okay? The other thing I like is the big play potential out of this and you're gonna see that plays in with number seven on here. It can be ran in a variety of formations. The longer, the longer I've run this play, the more different ways we found out how to run this play, okay? Last week we ran, see last week, last year, we ran this out of double wing, we ran out of eye wing, we ran it out of a couple shotgun formations, we have quarterback versions of how to run this, and I'm gonna show you some of those things when we get the film. Um, and the last one is, I just love the double handoff plays. It's highly deceptive, and you know at the high school level at least, you're gonna see a lot of guys that peer into the backfield, and they're, wa they're watching our kids. When we motion a kid, they're watching that kid. They see him get tossed the ball, and he's running across the formation, and all of a sudden we get outside handoff outside of that, and we get kids that are highly out of, uh, out of place for the defense and the fits aren't correct, and it becomes pretty difficult to defend if you run it correctly. All right, so base rules here. So I'm going to start on, this is the left side of our line, working down to the right side of our line. And this is as if we're running reverse to left. So our quick side's on the left, we're running to the left. Okay, our X tight ends rule is down to backer. So he's going to block down on his inside gap. Nobody's there. He's going to go to backer. The next call on here, we have our Utah and our quick, and these two guys work in tandem on this play. The quick guard is going to make the call here. We have what we call a me you call. So he's going to look to see who has the better down blocking opportunity. Where's the next down? Where's the next guy that's down? Okay. So if a quick guard has somebody in a, a two eye inside him, or there's a nose, he's going to make a you call as in you, the Utah, you have to pull and log the end. If there's somebody like a three technique on his outside, somebody that he's going to have, he cannot down block. He's going to make a me call telling the Utah I'm pulling you're down blocking. OK, so all that is is just a quick communication for our kids, just letting them know we're because we're an angle blocking team. A lot sometimes we don't have the biggest kids. Sometimes we don't have the strongest kids. But what I do want to make sure our kids do is get put in a really good position to uh, block people with angles and be a little bit more powerful. So that's why we use that me you call there. The next thing we have here is the center and the center's rule is mama. That is man on man away. So if he's got a nose guard, he's blocking on. If he doesn't, he's blocking away from the play down the line of scrimmage. The next thing we have on here is our backside to our power guard and our power tackle. We pull both of them on this play. And I'm going to tell you, uh, this is the base way that we run our backside, our guard tackle and Y. And as we get on, I'm going to show you an odd front here at the end of how we block that. And I'm going to show you a variation of how we block the backside too. So we have two, two little different wrinkles for how we block the backside of this play. Okay, so the first thing we do is we pull our guard around the uh, in man on the line of scrimmage looking inside out. I think it's important when you pull a kid to make sure you give them instructions of what you want them to do. I always tell the kids, we're going to use your eyes, and I want your eyes setting up where you're pulling on this play. Our guard is looking. Once he gets around the edge, his eyes are going to be inside, no threats there, to scanning outside because nothing frustrates me more as a coach than when you put a kid in a really good position, he pulls around, he gets out there, there's nobody there. Then what does he do? He keeps running. He runs up field, doesn't block anybody. Well, I try to prevent that by telling the kids we're going to use our eyes. There's nobody there. Scan outside to find the next threat where, where he is so we can block somebody on the play. Okay. Our power tackle's job is going to be to pull and plug the first hole you see. And you guys know how it is as, as a double wing team. If you're a, a double wing guy like myself, there's always somewhere to plug, you know, we got to make sure a linebacker is not going to scrape and fill. So that's that tackle's job is plug, pull, get in that first hole you see and find somebody inside out again, just like the power guard. Our wide tight end, if you're not a double wing guy, you might not have ever heard this terminology, but we need shoe shine on the backside. If you've ever played a double wing team, you're going to be familiar with the guy in the in man on the line of scrimmage. He's going to step hard with his inside foot and we teach the guy to bring his backside arm and run it through the inside knee to crotch of the defender uh, down inside the tackle to guard area. 
Okay. It's not a pretty thing, but we've never, we've never had anybody hurt or anything like that, but it is, it is effective. Okay. So moving on to the skill position guys over here. Now we have the quarterback take what he's called a punch step with his right foot. And all that is, is just picking it up, moving it inside. So that right foot is going to be, uh, He's honestly, like if I'm clocking it, he's probably taking his right foot. He's moving it to 11 o'clock and he's doing it real quick. He's not, he's picking up and trying to put it down as quickly as possible. Okay. And he's taking his left foot and he's moving it to five o'clock on the toss. And I try to simplify this as much as I can. And I don't know if a lot of you guys use uh, the clock method for quarterbacks anymore. I, I use it a lot, but I also try to be realistic with it. In the fact of now I use a lot of body part placements with the kids. Uh, and this is one here. So like a left foot to five o'clock toss, I'm going to tell that kid to take your left foot and, and go and go right butt cheek with it. Okay. To me, that's easier. That kid's going to remember that more often than not. And as soon as he takes five o'clock, he's going to toss soft, toss the ball to the a back and he's going to lead the play instead of falling back into his power motion, into, uh, excuse me, into his power blocking routine. He's going to lead the play looking outside in with his eyes. Okay. The a back, we're going to rip motion, obviously, because we're in the power series and we want to have a power type fake. But what I tell the a back is you're going to need to be slow and you're going to need to gain as little ground as possible. We want this, we want this, uh, fake and motion to just be, uh, mainly, mainly for show, mainly for eyes of the defense. He's going to catch the toss, and then he's going to hand off outside and continue his path. And what we tell that kid is after you've hand off, we want you to grab jersey, hold, and run, and try to get tackled. We reward those kids if they get tackled on any type of, uh, any type of play like this or counter when we run it. Okay. The next thing we have here is our B back. Our B back is our fullback behind the quarterback. And what we tell him again, every, the first couple steps need to look like power. So he's going to take a hard step to the right and then he's going to lead to the left. Now this is where a lot of timing comes in place where you're going to need to work with the quarterback, the guard, the tackle, the fullback. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of meat moving and you got to get it sorted out and get it in line. The way we tell this to fit is I tell the B back, you're going to need to fit behind the quarterback and in front of the guard. If you can, if you're slow, you're going to have to be behind the tackle. It's just how it is. Okay. And again, that's just something that you would have to work on and you have to get good. If you can't, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. If you just continue the fullback on the power path, you can do that too. And the, the C backs, the last guy on here, we have him counter step. That's a step with his right foot. And he leans heavy like he's going to do his power job. And then he's going to take an outside handoff and continue to the edge. And then his next job is to obviously read the edge and see wherever the hole is going to be. Because sometimes this play is going to be a cut up type play. We might, we might uh, lose contain at the end and it might become a hard kick on that kid that we were supposed to log. And we might be underneath him. We might, uh, we might see that kid stretch real hard and we might come underneath him. We might be able to log him real quick. We might have the edge all of a sudden, okay? Let's go, next slide. All right, so Ron here is just a quick draw up of the play we were just talking about. So when we look at this, and again, I'll just go over here left to right. At the end, we have a 6-2 even front here. And we have the end, his rule is down backer, so he's obviously blocking down. And then these two have the me, you call. He has the easy down block. So he's going to call you, 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 you need to pull, you need to log. So he's going to log the end or down block here. We're going to have the mama car, excuse me, not mama call, but we have the mama rule for our center. He's no man on. So he's blocking man away. We have our two pools here. I didn't draw them because I didn't want to get uh, too many lines on the screen. But what we have here is this guard is going to pull with his eyes inside out. And then we have the tackle that's going to pull for first hole, which in this defense is definitely going to happen right here at this point and try to prevent any type of linebacker scrape or run through. And then we're going to have our shoe shine right here where he's going to take his hard uh, flat step with his left foot and rip his right arm through this defender in the five technique. Okay. And again, I didn't try the fullback, but he is going to step hard here 
and come through looking inside out. And to me, the money player on this is quarterback. The quarterback has to be able to block on this play. Otherwise, we're not going to have anybody for this corner on the edge. So he's going to soft toss, go. And a lot of times you'll see teams that are rotational secondary when you play a, when you play a double wing team. It's like this kid might come down here as secondary force. This kid might move over here. We might see this kid try to squeeze your backside. Okay. So if we're able to get hands on this kid, it's really favorable for us in the run game. Okay because a lot of times then they're going to be relying on a safety who might be highly out of position to be an alley runner on, on the play side that they thought was over here, and it's going to really hurt them over here. Okay. And, again, it shows quick little motion of my crazy uh, scribbles here. And we'll have counter step, take the handoff that's going to happen somewhere over here behind uh, the original midline point, and look at outside in. And again, that's against an even front. If you have any question on this, make sure just to let me know, and I'll, I'll answer them for you. All right. Now, I drew up an odd front here, and I wanted to talk about variation that we do on the backside. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to put this on here. So, again, I'm just going to talk through this real quick. Again, we have down backer rule here. We have our me you call here. The only guy that had a real good down block opportunity here is quick guard. So he's going to call you, you, you. That's going to tell Utah to pull and seal. And again, we have mama. So he's man on here because he's got a man on. And the big thing is right here. So if we feel like we have a guy inside far enough that it's difficult for this kid to go with, we're not going to shoe shine him. We're going to take this kid and we're going to work hard and we're going to scramble his inside shoulder. Our wide tight end is going to release flat into the line of scrimmage here and run upfield, trying to work to the opposite side. So I want him almost running underneath linebacker level, looking here, trying to look for any type of level two or uh, level three issues that we're going to have over here. Okay, and we're still going to pull our guard looking inside out. So that's our alternative blocking that we're going to use on our backside because I think sometimes it's difficult to get this kid or sometimes if you don't have a kid that – that's a, a great shoe shiner. I don't want to. I don't want to lose one of our good plays in our playbook for that issue. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do here is transition to some film. All right, so I got some reverse clips pulled up, and we're going to go here and again try to pull up some different clips that are going to showcase some different formations that we use out of here and some different things. And again, some of these aren't great clips because guess what? Bad things happen. <laughs> I know sometimes uh, sometimes people don't believe that, but it does. And some of these clips I pulled, even though they're bad plays, is to show like, hey, like here's something we did with this play out of this formation. Okay, so first play, and again, uh, this is us in the double wing pistol. So we have our fullback, we have our wing to the right, we have our tailback behind here, and this is our quarterback right here. So what's going to happen on this play is we're all going to the right, and you're going to see an outside handoff by the quarterback going this way, and everybody's following it here. All right, just to reverse this here. So one thing you're going to see is what I talked about here when we have reverse counter sweep is What's the big determination on this play is going to be what happens on the edge. So right here, you're going to see our quick side guard is going to pull and this kid's going to come upfield and it's going to turn into more of a kick. Our wing's going to recognize that our lead blockers are going to come underneath it. And we're going to, we're going to run this more like a, a wide counter play. The other thing you notice here is just because of the formation of what we're doing, you lose the quarterback in this sense, but we do a really good job running and trying to get to backside corner, which becomes a real issue. And you'll notice linebacker flow away from our quarterback and wasn't even a great fake, but again, it's going to take eyes and it turns into a, it turns into a decent play for us. Okay, so another little wrinkle here. We're in the shotgun double wing right here. So basically all that means is now instead of having this kid in the pistol, we're going to have this kid in the sidecar right here. So when we do this, we're going to have an outside handoff by the quarterback, 
And typically, I like to lead this the halfback right here. We're going to see what variation we did right here. I believe this kid goes with the play, though. Yeah, he does. And he becomes right here. This kid becomes you're basically relate. He's going to he's going to take the quarterback's position on this play. So he's going to try to watch this kid. If he gets sealed, he's going to go to the next guy, which is going to be here. If this kid does not get sealed, he's going to help to seal this kid to the next level is the way I, the way I always teach that kid. So we'll see what happens here. Okay. You're gonna have to help with the seal. Did not do much for me there, but at least got in the way. Had a penalty was not on us, but we're still able to get a nice, easy nine yards there. And you'll see pool right here. He's able to get around our backside kid. It's working hard. And again, a lot of times if you're getting defenses out of place, sometimes you don't have to block a lot of people, which is great because we don't, we don't block a lot of people anyway, sometimes. <laughs> okay. Now here we had, we had a lot of injury issues this year. So we ended up just because of the situation we had at wing, we had one kid um, put back here. This is one of our, actually at the beginning of the year was one of our best tight ends. And then Isaac got moved back here to running back. And then I'm just going to show a variation real quick of how we run our reverse counter sweep out of the eye wing. So all that we've done is taken our A back and boom, put them down here. And now instead of our normal two steps on toss right here at, uh, at, a, at that angle, he's coming downhill. To me, it's easier to teach a kid to do that in a couple of days than it is to teach a kid how to run double wing power, double wing sweep, double wing rocket, all that stuff. So we just put him back in the we put him back in the eye wing and he had a, he had a lot of uh, success there, but how is this going to look? So what we're going to do here is obviously we're going to fake power. The quarterback is going to fake uh, the handoff here and the wing is going to counter step and he's going to come deep and he's going to get the handoff here on reverse. And again, obviously a loss of one wasn't a great play for us. And we're going to take a look at why, but I do want you to see that it can be ran this way. Now, what happens here, number one, is you're going to watch the stretch on our edge right here. This is not a good block here by our kid. We're going to get pull. Boom. He gets stoned about a yard and a half, two yards deep in the backfield right here. And then what kind of issue does that put us in right here? Well, all of a sudden now we have two blockers loaded up behind him getting blown off. And you can see right here, it's pretty easy to see, we're not getting anybody blocked at linebacker. And these kids are deep enough where we're going to see this kid fill in the alley. So it wasn't a great play for us, but I did put it in there so we can see, hey, you can run a play like this. All right, so now we're back to just regular double wing formation. And again, we're going to get save play here. We're going to get wing back motion to the right, and we're going to get outside handoff here. So let's take a look. All right, so what I like here is What I don't like here, excuse me, is we're allowing a kid in an inside shade here at tight end to penetrate over the top. He's got to stone this kid, and it, it really hurts our pool right here because uh, Charles, our guard here, pulls, and he should be pulling for this kid to log this kid. Instead, he's trying to help uh, our tight end here keep this kid inside, which really hurts us on this play. And you can see this kid's fighting outside, fighting outside, fighting outside. And so it really hurts us. What could have been a what could have been a much bigger play for us? It's time for three yards. And again, it all starts with how you're going to block the edge on a sweep type play. All right, same type of play right here. We're going to see reverse here into the boundary, and obviously we're going to toss to him and come back side here. And one thing I like right here that you can see real quick is our guard's going to pull and bam, he's going to be on this kid. We're going to get this kid logged right away. Good position. This is our quarterback right here. So obviously quarterback is going to be hopefully for the next guy here. And we have a clear edge right here. There we go. You can see one thing that I like that I told you sometimes it's difficult at fullback. You're going to see right here, this kid's going to counter step. He's going to come back through and he's going to look and say, okay, well, I can't really make it around the edge, but I'm going to try to get through here 
and he works his way through the interior here and tries to get out front of the lead. And I believe he makes a chip block here. So you can see sometimes it's difficult at fullback. Okay, come through here, try. Yeah, don't hit that kid in the back. There you go. But he works his way through there. Sometimes it's difficult. And that's why I go, I go back and forth on if I just want to keep this kid going to the backside on this play. Is it more deceptive? But you can see right here, it's difficult on linebackers. They know that we have our best kids offensive line-wise over here. We're motioning this kid over here. There's a great chance for running power. So they're going to go ahead and step. Their first initial steps are, bam, right here on us. So it really lightens up the box on us. If we're able to get the log and we're able to get hands on this corner, we have a good play. And that's what happens here. Log, hands on the corner. Now we have the edge. And that's how it works, guys. And I hope you guys were able to get something out of this. Uh, if you have any needs or you want to talk double wing football or you want to talk reverse or anything like that, uh, please reach out to me and let me know. And I would be 100% open with that. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.